So we'd like to welcome you to the Arctic Environmental Humanities Workshop. Um, it's run by myself, Adriana Kirchun at Boston University and my colleague, Michael Bravo at Cambridge University Scott Polar Research Institute. And we're, we're thrilled to have you. Um, this is the fourth talk we've, we've ha held and we're going for a broad range uh, of humanities and conversation with the arts, with the sciences, with the social sciences, focused on the Arctic. Um, and our talk today, I'm really excited about. Um, many of you have seen his film, Sume, The Sound of a Revolution, came out in 2015. Um, he's the director, Inuk Silis Hu. Um, his film was shown at the Berlinale, which is the first Greenlandic film to be shown there. He graduated from the Royal Danish Art Academy in 2010. He's an established artist who has exhibited around the world in Greenland, Denmark, France, Iceland, Finland, Latvia, Germany. His films uh, are shown, his short films and documentaries are shown internationally. Um, and he's working on some exciting new projects after Sume. He's speaking today to us about the film Sume in relationship to contemporary Greenland politics and issues today. Um, so we're really excited to have you with us today, Inuk. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, well, yeah, now it's, uh, it's really about eight or nine years ago, uh, the, the idea for this film uh, came, came to me and my, my partner in the, in the film. Um, I want to start by saying that I, I when we say in, in Greenland, when I first came to myself, when I first uh, realized my surroundings as a kid, uh, we already had home rule government. Uh, so it was kind of like, a, you know, we don't think much about it when you're a kid and when you were young, but I grew a little older and then um, found out that the music that I've been hearing, like literally every day in the radio, you would, you would hear Sumi playing uh, at least uh, a couple of times a day. Um, and, you know, so now we were there 40 years after uh, the, the first record came and um, they were still playing in the radio. And, um, but the kids, uh, a lot of kids still like, um, when, when, you, when you try to learn to play the guitar, this would, uh, one of the riffs from, from Sumi's song, Inuit Nunet, would be the thing that you would try to play and when you were a kid. And, and, and a lot of uh, kids still know some of their lyrics. And it was like a question, I mean, why, you know? How, how, come, how come they still resonate uh, today, even 40 years after? Uh, when they're singing about um, uh, like uh, self empowerment and all this, and and we have our home rule government today, and and then we got our uh, self rule government, and and does this mean that that we haven't got we haven't progressed since the 1970s? Uh, this question uh, came into our minds uh, really, and 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 also um, like. Yeah, I mean, of course, we stand on the shoulders of our parents. And, and I found a picture from 1973 where my mom is standing next to Malik, the, the main singer and the, the poet from the Sumi band, in a demonstration uh, in uh, Copenhagen in, in front of the, the Folketing, and what's it called, in, in the, like the, the, the government building. Uh, and, and it was something with mining. There were... There were uh, they were protesting, and and there was a there was a, um, what do you call it um, the, the the little wagons would have a kid in, and there was a kid in in that in, in my mom was having a kid in this this thing, and, and all, so that must be me. So I was I was at a demonstration in 1973 with with Malik and my mom uh, in front of the Danish government building. So it's like okay, we got. Uh, home rule government now, uh, but somebody fought for it. You know what the hell happened, and, and this was the question that we we started uh, going into to to Sumi's music because we thought that they were kind of speaking the words that of the of the people like at the time and through music and art. Um, so and and digging into it, it, it also turns out that. I mean, it, it meant really a lot to a lot of people in Greenland, in, especially in the 70s, but also, you know, later. Um, 
So that, that's really how, what started it. And then, you know, during the research, um, you know, we, we, we find out a, a lot like about our parents' generations, what, what, what they were doing and, and also, you know, really starting to read, to read the lyrics. I mean, we would kind of know what they were, but not thinking so much. You know, you listen to music and you kind of mm. get some of it. But then when you start really go into the lyrics, um, I mean, they're, they're very kind of poetic and uses a lot of um, pictures in the language. But, but then, you know, it, when you think about the time, it, it turns out that, I mean, some of them are very metaphorical, but uh, others are like really, really direct uh, political um it, it we kind of you know more and more realized like how strong those words must have been in the 70s when when the the climate like the cultural climate was that we were supposed to become danes like in the in the 50s and 60s and then the start 70s it was like a, a starting to be this turning point where we were people were looking around themselves and looking at themselves in the mirror and saying, I'm, I'm not Danish. I mean, I, then what am I? Oh, I, I'm Greenlandic then, you know, I, I, um, and, and, uh, and then wanting to, to f fight for, to, for their own uh, like uh, self-empowerment. Um, so really that, that was the starting point. And, um, through, through making the film, also realizing how few pictures, like how few cameras there were in the seventies. We were like, we, we, we like to, I love documentaries. And, and of course, like you want to be, you want to be there. You want to see, you want to see images like uh, film, like, like, like you can imagine yourself being in the room with, with people. And we found like two video, like film clips of them or two or three. And then, like we st starting to realize that they were playing to the young people of of the students in in Denmark and in Greenland and I mean and even maybe people couldn't afford afford cameras and uh, besides you would have to send the film to four thousand kilometers to another continent to get it um, to get the negatives uh, you know made into positive so uh, it, w it was it was really hard to find images. But then we, we stumbled upon um, like my Emil, my partner in the project and the, the founder of the, the project, uh, his grandfather's old Super 8 uh, millimeter film from, from his travels in Greenland. And there we realized that people that were looking him, at him and, and at the lens, some of them were like, you know, they were smiling and they were like, um, they were greeting him or they were like, it had a totally different open face than you would see in any other like TV um, crews that were came to Greenland and filming like from the Danish broadcasting company or, or other places. They would have the images where people are like, you know, all <laughs> stiff and, <laughs> and this was like, people were like, uh, because they would knew the one that were filming it. So uh, slowly we re realized that that was the goal and that was the images that we could use to to get uh, to put people in the 70s but then it didn't have any sound so that's why in a lot of the film we we, we try to to see what happens uh, how the the music of Sumi would echo with the images of the the 70s that are grabbed from from uh, people's private uh, super 8 film uh, and we yeah we think that made a uh, like a like a a good uh, good scene for Sumi's lyrics uh, to, to, to speak in its own terms. Uh, and um, so, well, then, oh, time is even flying. So um, we, we can, I, I hope for some questions about what you're interested in, but uh, I was just saying that after, when, when the, the film is, leaves us in 1979, um, like even if it had already started there, Sumi's revolution of the, the political revolution also was a musical revolution. Uh, Malik went on to Greenland to record a very long, long series of Greenlandic music. They made a, a record label 
which was the first Green Man neglect record label. And they recorded like uh, hundreds and maybe, I think they, hundreds of uh, records with new Greenlandic bands and a lot of them singing politically. And then like gradually the, the, the political lyrics, although they are still here today, uh, also became like uh, personal, uh, like inner life. Uh, I mean, instead of speaking on behalf of a group of people, like a whole people, you were speaking um, like personal feelings, which could, um, so so this kind of, in, in today's uh, landscape of music in Greenland is very um, diverse. You, you also have political, uh, um, political lyrics, but also like a very much broad, broader sense of lyrics. I just want to share the screen. Uh, well, first of all, as you know, after the, probably you know, in, in 79, we got the self uh, home rule government and, and we had that for, for uh, roughly 30 years. And, and today um, we got what we call a self rule government, which is basically a broader, broader bigger version of, of home rule government. Um, but what, what people right want now, I mean, the, the general kind of, the, the majority uh, would, would like, um, again, even back from what Sumi is singing, to, to have complete uh, self like independence really. Uh, so what's up in the times now is that there is a uh, there is a commission. Well, these this is just a group of people, but it's uh, the the commission to make a Greenlandic uh, constitution uh, has been established, and they I mean and they have a kind of a up up and down times in how how much in how how much they're progressing, but um, I mean the general consensus is that we want independence. But then again, when that thought started, I think the landscape today is more, um, I'm sorry for the, for the kind of little bit bad images, uh, but the, the landscape today is that this, this uh, need um, is also countered by another um, kind of new voices that are saying that well, maybe the the the, the king the, the kingdom together with Denmark is is also a good thing, and it's and there's been parties that's been saying this once in a while up through the times, but I think I I sense that there's also part of the the, the populations which are a little bit also turning towards it because um, one thing that happened like I think was it was last year there was a documentary that came out uh, about sexual abuse. In in a, in, a, in Desila, in a town on the east coast of Greenland, it's a, it was made by the Danish Broadcasting Corporation. It was called uh, the town where the where the kids disappear, mm -hmm. and uh, that really made some major waves. Uh, so much that um, so so big waves. I mean, and the government didn't really was not really doing anything. And it, and I think from from uh, from quite big, um, what do you call protests from 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 other parties, but also from from uh, voices in in the in the in the public, uh, they wanted to uh, to to get help to because um, it seemed like that the 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 community the community wouldn't, was not able to help people that were sexually assaulted because they didn't have the the human resources to do it and. A lot of people saw this as a uh, like a failure in the social politics in Greenland. So, in the for the first, I think for the first time in history, we we asked for help from Denmark, which is something new. Uh, I mean, because we've already, or of course, always wanted more and more self rule, um, but now asking for from for help from Denmark uh, became like. Last year, uh, they they agreed on upon a deal uh, to for the Danish government to come and help uh, with this, especially this the sexual assault in Greenland, and and they also Denmark also uh, invested in uh, airports in Greenland, uh, and 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 we made them like uh, so. It seems like even though we're going towards wanting more and more self independence, we're also kind of reaching back a little bit. 
uh, so there's, it's kind of a new landscape and also from Trump wanting to buy Greenland and China wants some a piece of us and all this, um, it's very, um, it's, it's times where we kind of redefining our relationship with Denmark and with our own kind of image, I think. Um, yeah. So, so if Trump did one good thing, it's like, uh, <laughs> it's it's like that that we kind of uh, thank him in, in in some ways he did, he did good for us um, that to so that we kind of also put put a, a like a uh, what do you call it underline that that we are in, in, in kind of a great importance in terms of Arctic uh, security policy for Denmark and and Denmark's place in the at the table in in the international politics. And then there's one more thing uh, I'd, w I'd want to mention. That's also kind of a, I don't know if it's a sign of anything, but with, um, it's been d done uh, through, through times sometimes that this statue, which is uh, the statue of Hans Eel, the first colonizer in Greenland that came here in 1721, which really, uh, you know, is considered to have started the co colonizing of Greenland. Um, it's been sabotaged a few times, but last year it was it really created some waves when they, they somebody painted it and wrote decolonize on it. And um, it's again um, a sign uh, that the some young people especially uh, really want to like, I mean, that, that it, this has created a debate if whether this this uh, sculpture, which is you know overseeing the part all the old part of Nuuk, uh, like it stands on top of the hill, it, whether it should be moved or thrown in the ocean, or what should the community do with it? And it, there was a there was a ballot uh, whether to remove it or not. But then uh, the ballot turns out that you know people wanted it to stay even for now. So um, I think. I don't know if it's a new, um, like if it's a new kind of discussion, it's already kind of been there, but it's just kind of to paint a little bit of the landscape of what's being discussed these days in terms of our own uh, self-empowerment and self-government. Uh, 